Hi everybody, this video is looking at natural selection um, and natural selection is quite a complex process so this video is really just looking at the basics. So to understand natural selection we need to think about variation. So um, I'm going to use an imaginary little organism. So here's our organism and we're going to have a population of those organisms. And this population of organisms um, lives in the same environment as a predator. Uh, and this particular predator, it doesn't have very good eyesight. In fact, it looks as if it hasn't got any eyes at all. So um, it's only able to identify prey if there is a really big contrast between the prey and its background. So in our situation here, all of our individuals are the same. There's no variation in terms of their colour. So they've got the same colour phenotype, which means that the predator isn't able to see them. So not only does this individual survive, but so does this one, and they all survive. So sometimes having no variation can actually be an advantage in an environment. Let's say that the environment changes. So perhaps we were in an environment which uh, the reason the background was white was because it was very cold, snowy and icy. Maybe because of climate change, that snow and ice um, is melting. So now we've got a rocky background. That's happened very quickly. Our population hasn't had a chance to uh, adapt to that yet. So we still have our population of white organisms and we've still got our same predator. And remember, the predator is able to identify prey if they contrast with their background. So unfortunately, that means that this individual is going to be eaten. And probably so will this one. And potentially they all could. So in this situation, the fact that there is no variation is uh, detrimental. That population is at risk of um, being completely wiped out of all of the individuals in that particular population being killed. So variation is important because it results in something called differential survival. So if we have our population, and in this population there is some variation. So we can see here that although most of them are white, we have one individual here which is brown in colour. So our predator is still going to be able to identify and eat any of the white ones, so they're going to die. But this brown individual, because it's got a different phenotype, it's going to survive. So because we've had variation, we've got differential survival. Some survive and some don't. And in this case, predation is what we call a selection pressure. So the predation is the thing which is causing some individuals to die and some to survive, based on which ones have a more advantageous phenotype or more advantageous characteristics. OK, so if we go back to this same uh, situation then. So the individual with the more advantageous characteristics are more likely to survive. So in this environment, the brown individual had the advantageous characteristic. It's more likely to survive than the white ones. So they have all gone. Now what that means is that this individual is now able to reproduce. And because the this individual here, the reason it's brown is because of the alleles it's got. It's to do with this genotype. That means that it's very likely that its offspring, all of these here, which are the offspring, because they are going to inherit the genes from the parent, they will also have that brown colour. So now we've got a population which looks very different from the population we had previously. Whereas before they were all white, apart from one brown individual, we've now got a population which is all brown. They're all camouflaged. They've all got the advantageous characteristic of brown colour, which means none of them will be eaten, they're all going to survive. So what we've seen is that individuals that survive reproduce. So individuals with the more advantageous characteristics are more likely to survive and those individuals are going to, uh, going to then reproduce and then that means they will pass on their alleles. So over time we're going to see an increase in frequency, in this case of the brown alleles, or an increase in frequency of whatever alleles happen to be advantageous in that environment. 
Okay, now this is a really important misconception I just want to address. The individuals do not evolve. Evolution happens at a population level. And it's evolution is talking about a change in the population as a result in changes in the frequency of the alleles that you see. So if we have a population of white individuals living in an environment that is very much a brown environment, then we have our selection pressure, which is our predator. The predator is going to cause individuals to die. So if this happens and the predator eats all of these, what can't happen is that this individual can then adapt and become brown. That is not what we mean by evolution. So we can talk about individuals adapting sometimes. So we might say, oh, they've adapted to live in a warm environment. But that is not what we mean here. This situation does not happen. The variation has to be in the population to begin with. So you would have to have some white individuals and some brown individuals already because of variation. And then because of that variation, we get differential survival where some will survive and some will die because of the selection pressures. OK, so to just summarise the principles of natural selection, the first thing, um, which I haven't mentioned so far, is overproduction of offspring. So in order to maintain um, a, a, a constant population level, more individuals are born than will survive. So you usually have a very high rate of reproduction, but a lot of those um, organisms that are born are going to die before they're able to reproduce themselves. We have to have variation in the population. If there is no variation, if the individuals are all genetically identical, then natural selection cannot happen. So natural selection is this process of some sort of selection pressure causing some individuals to die and the more advantageous individuals to survive and pass on their advantageous alleles. That is natural selection. That can only happen if there is variation. The selection pressures, predation is an example. Um, a lot of the selection pressures are linked to intraspecific competition. And that is a result of our overproduction of offspring. So because we have far more individuals who are born um, than will survive, the reason, the reason that a lot of them die is because they're having to compete for resources. So you've got this huge number of individuals born and only a limited number of resources. And that competition between offspring is what means that some of them are going to die and the ones that die are more likely to be the ones that have the less favourable characteristics. So because of our selection pressures and because there's variation, the fitter individuals survive and reproduce. And what I mean by this, when we say fitter, we mean the individuals with the characteristics which are more advantageous, more beneficial in that particular environment. If the environment changes, then you might suddenly find that different characteristics are more advantageous. The advantageous alleles will get passed on. And then you end up with um, an increase in the frequency of those advantageous alleles. So just like we saw in our example, if the brown colour is the advantageous characteristic, then due to selection pressure, due to predation, those brown individuals are more likely to survive and reproduce because they are fitter. They pass on those brown colour alleles and the frequency of those brown alleles increases because they're more advantageous in that environment. OK, that really is, is like a sort of a summary overview of the whole process of natural selection. Um, but what we'll do is we'll have a look in some other videos and we'll start looking at some of the details of how that takes place. But hopefully for now, that gives you a starting point.